fourth year of competition. Uh, the purpose of this club, uh, we like to provide students with a hands-on experience, uh, give them good opportunities uh, in a college level to do uh, engineering product projects, uh, all as well as business and other other side and actually get uh, real real world experience, uh, something that you can do actually in industry. Uh, we also do a lot of outreach, uh, provide other students, other younger uh, middle school or whatever age, uh, make them interested in robotics. Uh, and also to spread the message to other uh, just everyday people about science and technology. Alright, so the frame. First off, uh, well this is Gauss, our robot, our ROV this year. Uh, frame, uh, simple, uh, modular, easy to access everything, just run the frame, nothing, nothing too special about it. Uh, all bolts together, quarter 20 bolts, aluminum, pretty standard. So. Alright, so the water tank closures are just, alright. So we have one major water tank closure right here that, that houses all electronics and then three counter modules. Uh, they all use O-ring seals, uh, compressed uh, to a certain formula. Uh, we found in the Parker O-ring book, which I don't know if you guys are familiar, it's, it's a big book of O-rings, all about O-rings. <laughs> it's a whole science on how to do these things. Uh, we found that 120% width for the group and 90% for the depth is like the perfect formula to make an O-ring seal. Uh, our, all these enclosures have been tested down to 40 feet. Uh, we went down, to, I think Lake Pleasant it was last year, and it was all good down at the bottom of there. So uh, and we all have bolting connectors on each of these that also provide the waterproof for the wires. Disconnectable. Disconnectable. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. So. All right. So to start, we receive 40 volts from these batteries on the surface down our tether. Initially, we have a fuse here for safety, five amps. And then it enters our central electronics enclosure. And inside of here, we use these micro brand DC DC power converters. And they convert 48 volts to either 12 volts, which are logic electronics use, and also the claw runs on. And also 5 volts, which is uh, the power that our thrusters run on. And additionally, a few of our components use uh, 3 volts. And we have small linear power converters wherever we need. And we use auto reset fuses uh, wherever we can, particularly on the thrusters, so that if we do uh, have an electrical problem that's only temporary, we don't have to disassemble everything, replace fuses. We can uh, let it cool off for a few seconds and go right on our way. Alright, so propulsion. Uh, we have five motors on here. They are brushless uh, motors. Uh, because of this, they don't really need any extra water. All the wires, there's no exposed electrical contacts. All the wires are enamel. So that means we can run them underwater and don't, not worry about them shorting out. Uh, we do have to do some precautions though because there is corrosion involved. So after every run, we do wash them with isopropyl alcohol to prevent that. Uh, so yeah, we have forward reverse, uh, two vertical, and one straight. And the benefits of having brush thrusters is we can get significantly more torque than a brush thruster because the brush thrusters automatically detect how much uh, weight is being applied to a shaft and increase power appropriately. Alright, the way the robot is controlled is there's two set different separate systems. There's an Arduino microcontroller and the main housing right there. All our sensors are hooked up to that. Uh, I get the input, sends it back on the serial line through our tether, through our laptop. Um, on the laptop, we run a Java code to control uh, the controls, we have our GUI interface that it displays all the temperature sensors and then we see what controls are being pressed. Um, useful uh, image icons are showed up. If the robot is missing and not getting any feed, we get that. If we can put any of our semi-autonomous functions, we know what's on, when it's on. Uh, and then any other debugging error shows up in that window when we're running that. Uh, this year we completely redid our service controls. Uh, last year was pretty large not maintainable um, and not well commented to fix anything or make any adjustments. So this year uh, we decided to go with smaller classes um, and arrange them nicely in little neat packages. So when we have to make a change, we just go to that one class, change it. Um, so nothing else in the code is affected by that. Uh, it's really easy to maintain and use for the future. Sensors. Inside this main electronics enclosure, we have a 9-axis IMU, so we get um, 
X, Y, Z and rotation X, Y, and Z, as well as cardinal direction using magnetometers. Externally, we have a temperature sensor, which is in probe form, so that uh, we can measure things far away from the center of the robot. And inside this module, we have a microphone, so we can broadcast underwater noises to the surface. For the cameras, uh, I mentioned earlier we have uh, three, three water tank closures for the cameras, but in addition, in addition to that, we also have a stationary camera here for the claw. Uh, that helps us view and kind of see what we're grabbing. Uh, all of, uh, three of our uh, cameras are hand tilled. Uh, this one's actually just tilled. Uh, and that gives our robot a good viewing angle so we can view all the field at one time without having to maneuver the robot too much. Uh, there are a series of, some of them are black and white, some are color. Uh, to give different contrast ratios and that's all. Alright, so we have a symbiotic claw here. You can just open some clothes, standing it's very surprisingly strong actually. <laughs> and the coolest thing I think you have a green laser inside here that when the torpedoes on these rails will hit a little white probe which that we have in the container here that will activate to activate the motor down here. Send it up. And we also use the laser to hit the signal that we require for the Sears mission. Alright, so, speaking of torpedo, this is our torpedo for this year. Uh, uh, same kind of uh, waterproof that we have for these enclosures, but a lot smaller. It's 1.5 inch diameter, uh, acrylic in caps. And then from there, we have water, or not water, 3D printed uh, cowling and nose cone to give the uh, hydrogen shape of we also have a big uh, ballast ring down here that also makes it stable and makes it mutually buoyant. We are able to uh, slide the weight around to change the tilt as well. And then the motor is controlled by a Texas Instrument Launchpad microcontroller. Uh, we've got that programmed to always be sending neutral poles. Once it gets the laser, it fires the torpedo, and then once it's done running, um, it's on an infinite loop to stay in the neutral poles so it doesn't go off once we fire it. We've got a short video here of uh, us testing.
did not, we received a donation of the Seabotics clock, the 1500 and um, 100 feet of the cable, which I mentioned before, uh, $600. Which is the total work of so, the clock, which is the total work of the clock. Yeah, total one, cost. one area that we save in a lot too is we've machined the frame itself, so we don't have to pay anybody else for the man hour of um, making of those parts. Yeah, our mechanical team actually gets certified in the club. And we machine all our O-ray through all by ourselves. So. And these aluminum pieces are turned out of sometimes square feet, large pieces. Yeah, and especially on the torpedo, what we did, we took a big uh, acrylic sheet, it was like uh, three quarters of an inch thick, and we actually you know, took the bands off, cut it in a rough circle, and turned that down on the lathe to a perfect circle that we can then print over and have a seat. Okay, uh, we mentioned initially about some of the outreach we do. Here are some examples. A lot of our team members came from first robotics teams in high school. That's not a surprise. And a lot of us go back and help our teams during the robotics build season. That's kind of what our productivity really dies, because everybody is over at their individual robotics teams as much as they possibly can. Uh, we also have members who volunteer as staff at first robotics and first tech challenge competitions. And we hold outreach events on campus when there's open houses for the engineering school or the School of Earth and Space Exploration. We bring out our small RV and we set up a kiddie pool where we throw it in the fountain that's out front of the main building at ASU and we let people drive our RV. We have the camera feed and then little box switches. And they try to pick up a ring off the bottom and return to base. It draws a really good crowd and really gets for the young kids. We're usually one of the most popular booths there. <laughs> they all the kids come. Because they get to touch it. <laughs> yeah. I think one thing we try to emphasize when we do the demonstrations is that the, the robot that they're driving, they can actually build at home at a very low cost themselves and be able to drive it around in their own you know, back Explore some golf course ponds. <laughs> golf balls you can get. So we try and get people interested in, in this, this, in the way where it's affordable. It, it, you don't have to be an asset to afford it. Alright, so future improvements. Um, with this club, uh, because we're tied to NASA, we actually have interns that are, uh, they have an internship with NASA. I was one of those, and uh, my project was this thing right here uh, named SCUBA. Essentially, it's an underwater buoyancy system that we hope to implement in the future. Uh, it would afford these little modules here, we can fill with water, or not water, fill with air, and uh, actually change our buoyancy dynamically while we're driving our ROV. Uh, this would be helpful, so like, say we pick up something heavy, I know in past years we had to pick up really heavy things. Uh, in that case, you can pump more air down with the robot. Uh, it would just you know, push the water out, and then you would be usually buoyant again. Also help uh, rapid ascension, fill the thing with air, and then before you know you're at the top. So it will over there. These are the people we'd like to thank uh, for getting us here, able to talk to you with the people. Uh, people from NASA, people from our various sponsors, people from Arizona State University, and also our mentors at NASA, many of which probably cannot be here. But even the people here, Rob and Alex, uh, definitely help uh, whenever we have a problem with the code or any of the electrical stuff. Uh, they're always there to help us out, um, tell us what we're doing wrong. <laughs> Put in their own time, really, really helpful people. Mm -hmm. There's everybody on our team. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, most people. Thank you. 